All right, guys, we're up in Livonia, Michigan at Holbrook Racing Engines. It's my man, Chris Holbrook. Most guys know him from the track, running Factory Showdown, and a long history pro stock racer. Um, but what he does every day is build insane race engines, Fords, all brands, really. He invited us over to stop by, give us a look at what's going on at the shop. So we're going to see some pretty neat stuff today, starting with this. What is this piece of jewelry, Chris? Well, this is something that, uh, you know, Dustin Whipple and I, uh, we're going to do a joint effort in NMCA Pro Mod this year. And this is a uh, uh, 363 cubic inch uh, billet Coyote. We're going to have like a, a, a nine liter Whipple supercharger on it. And we're going to go uh, play with the big dogs and see what we can do. So this thing starts off as a giant chunk of aluminum and then just gets cut out into a block, right? And then yeah. sleeved. And then you build it up to be a uh, how much horsepower race engine? Well, we're hoping to, to make uh, 3,000 horsepower, but we'll, oh, we'll, we'll see. 3,000. So we're going to definitely follow this thing along. Chris, tell us a little bit about how you got started in, in racing and in engine building. Your dad obviously was a, you know, a successful drag racer and engine builder himself, but did you just simply follow in his footsteps? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I grew up at the racetrack. Uh, my dad... He, he worked for, you know, a national can company back in the day, but he, he built engines out of his garage. Right. So, I mean, I was with it all the time and, you know, we went to the track all the time. And uh, then basically he says, you know, this is taking off pretty good. And then he started his own business. And, uh, you know, so here we are. So how many years have you been in this building and how many years have you been uh, in business yourself? Well, we've been here about uh, 15 years. Right. And, and I... <laughs> I've been doing it all my life so I mean uh, basically I started working for my dad when I was about uh, 12 13 years old you know right he probably had you sweeping a floor at first oh, <laughs> I swept the, uh, many of floors and I was a parts cleaner for a long time you know all right Chris so after a super successful run in factory showdown and Holly EFI supercar running uh, the brand new Cobra jet which you still build a lot of engines for those cars you're gonna jump into something new we got a 2000 Cobra here I mean it's red <laughs> it looks like the factory race uh, it's actually race, race, race red. So uh, tell us what's going on here. Well, this is uh, we're going to run NMCA uh, Extreme Street um, again. Uh, Whipple is uh, doing a, a billet 3.8 right. uh, supercharger for it, and uh, uh, we're going to go try have some fun this year. You know. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I mean, a different challenge, different class and a completely different suspension and chassis setup, right, than what you're used to running, at least for the past uh, past few years? Yeah, exactly, you know, uh, it's gonna be uh, weird to let go of a trans brake button instead of my foot, right? and it's got, you know, gonna have an automatic shifter, you know, so, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be eighth mile. Right. So, uh, how quick are you looking to run? Well, the record's a 452, so uh, okay. hopefully we can be right around there, but, you know, it's, uh, it's gonna be another learning curve, but. Hopefully we can get there in a short time. So tell us a little about a little bit about the history of this car and uh, how you came about deciding on this as opposed to maybe taking a new Cobra Jet or some other type of Fox body or something. Um, well, this was a, a customer of mine, Bruce Tronalone, and um, he, he's been building this you know on and off for the last five years. And he just texted me out of the blue one day and said, "Hey, I think I want to just." My daughter's getting married and right. you know I'm getting older and he says I think I just want to sell the car so uh, uh, he's uh, helping putting the car together and he's going to go to the track with us so he's still going to be involved and right. uh, so that's that's what happened I bought it from him and here we are and everything on this car I told him I'm like man we're not going to for the Riddler award in Autorama you know we're, <laughs> right. this is a race car and he goes well he goes my thought was not racing before he goes I figured I was going he was going to suck so he said after first round i push it over into the car show area oh that's freaking hilarious <laughs> well i don't think you're going to suck and i don't think you're going to uh lose first round too often in this thing because well, you've been competitive in everything that you've driven right well that's you know that's the plan is we go to the races and we try to win you know and uh hopefully uh, we can have some success cool. all right chris horsepower induction's where it's at and i know you guys go through a lot of trouble to make the cylinder heads perfect because they got to flow the maximum amount of air so we have a coyote head here, right? What's going on? Well, this, this cylinder head here, normally, you know, like on one of our factory stock engines, we have to remain within the tolerances and the CC volume of the, of the runners. Right. Um, but this particular one here, we, this is kind of, uh, we opened it up as, as far as we can and I uh, got the maximum flow out of it. Um, we got uh, beryllium seats and uh, bronze guides and uh, 
hopefully uh, it's going to allow it to flow and uh, have that Whipple 3.8 to uh, push a lot of air through there. Well, we use uh, you know uh, our RMC machine over here, and uh, for starters, we make sure that the deck surface is nice and flat, and it's got the correct finish for whatever gasket you're using. Right. Um, if it's an MLS, we want a real smooth finish. Uh, a lot. Of, this one's going to be running a copper gasket, so we're going to actually put a receiver groove in here. Okay. And um, and then a, a, a lot of times, you know, we'll use a surdy, and we'll make sure that. Uh, these valve seats are just perfectly straight and round and the valve seats, you know, and no, no leakage. Gotta have the valve sealing up, so. All right, what are you gonna show us next? Well, uh, we're gonna hopefully uh, show a, a, a Coyote, NA Coyote on the dyno. Uh, maybe we can make some big power with that. All right, let's check it out. Chris, that was music to my ears. I mean, blowers are great, turbos are great, but I love good old fashioned NA power. That thing sounded good at idle. At full song, oh my God, that thing was music to my ears. Well, how much power did it make and uh, how high did you rev that thing? Uh, we revved it up to 7,800 and it made 854 horsepower. Oh and my God. She's still climbing. And uh, you're not gonna believe this, but we took a lot of our old parts that was in the shop, you know, we took a crankshaft that we ground the mains down to 10, you know, that was cycled out of factory stock. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, some rods that were on the shelf and some old cylinder heads and we basically, uh, camshafts that I just had on the shelf and we kind of put a recipe together and, and put an engine together and here we are, you know, it, this is going to be uh, for my son Dell's car. Right. And, uh, of course, uh, his first time we're going to tame this way down, you know, until, uh, you know, he gets his feet wet, you know, right. and he gets used to it. So it's got a Cobra Jet intake on it. You can see monoblade uh, throttle body. What uh, what heads, uh, it's obviously a Coyote, but how many cubes, what's done to the heads and what cams are in it? It's a uh, 327 cubic inch. Right. Um, it's a bare block. Um, we got GT350 cylinder heads that, uh, you know, we did some, a uh, little bit of port work on it. And right. it's, it's, it's kind of some old uh, comp cams, uh, special ground cams we had on the shelf you know that we used way back in the day in factory stock right so uh it's also got wet sump oiling so it's yep. a pretty basic na build we did put a uh you know uh, the only thing i guess i should say is new on this thing is uh we put a gt500 uh, oil pan and oil and oil pump on it you right know, and figured it's got the windage different. tray and stuff yep what uh what compression ratio uh we're about 12 to 1. and it's on what fuel uh right now we're running c25 man that's impressive so at 12 to 1, 800, and how much horsepower? 850. Wow. So if you built one of these with uh, all-out compression, 14 or 15 to 1, I mean, could you get to 900 or 1,000? I'm thinking so. Our goal was to make 850, and I think we're going to kind of go over that because, like I say, it's still climbing. Right. But um, no sense to, you know, beat it up here on the dyno. We're going to beat it up on the track, you know? Yep. How high, how high will you rev it in the car? Um, I think we're going to be around 85. Okay, so almost another 1,000 RPM. Yep. Oh, that's impressive. Okay, this is our son and home, and uh, you know we spend uh, a lot of money to get uh, good good equipment, and uh, you know the importance of a, a, a straight and round bore is very important because if you got a bore that's got a lot of taper out around, you lose your ring seal, and it just uh, you will not make any power, and you have blow by, and a good straight uh, bore with the ring seal is just the, the best way to go. Yeah, uh, well, you know, the plate simulates a cylinder head, you know, so when you when you bolt a, a cylinder head on, all the bores kind of distort because you're, you're torquing, you're pulling from the, the main area, you know, the, the deck area yep. and down in the block. So, all right, Chris, we got the line hone here. So these are the main caps. The crank sits in place right here. But uh, you guys go through great lengths to make sure that that bore is square. Why is that important? 
Well, that's very important because, uh, you know, it's got to be nice and straight and round because you don't want to have uh, main bearing failure. You know, uh, we uh, mic everything and we usually put it on high limits to get your proper clearance on a race engine. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, like a lot of these older blocks, this 351 Windsor here, you know, we'll have to take it and, and cut the caps and we get the board down and then we'll hone it to where it's nice and straight and round again. So you actually cut the cap so it shrinks the hole, so it's out of round, then you bore it back square, and then you hone it to the perfect finish? Correct. And all right, Chris, so thanks everybody. We got an engine on the dyno. We showed you the shop. What a great morning here at uh, Holbrook Race Engines. Chris, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, everybody, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, as always, tell us what you want to see, and we'll give it to you.